the different shows and preparing music for all the shows. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't do, you know, Friday afternoon at two o'clock, I'm going to write down, I'm going to sit down and write a tune. Like it just doesn't work. I've tried that. I've tried, you know, every week I'm going to sit down for two hours and I'm going to be creative and I can't, it takes me more than two hours to switch modes from, um, you know, checking lists and, you know, checking off lists and getting stuff done to that space of almost boredom. Mm -hmm. I find boredom is really good for creativity, hmm. um, that I need that space of nothing else going on. So I've been lucky enough to be a part of a couple of residency programs where I go and for a week, that's all I do. You know, I just hang out and I write tunes and then I write them in a couple of different ways. Sometimes it's just whatever is flowing, you know, whatever it is that's coming out. I just go with that. Yeah. Some days I give myself an assignment. So I'll say, okay, you've written, you know, a whole bunch of tunes that are in minor keys or that are jigs or that are reels. So now let's do something else. Let's write a march or let's write a stress bay or, you know, so sometimes I'll set myself an assignment of you're going to write this kind of piece in this key. And then sometimes I'll look at other pieces that I really like. And I'll say, okay, what is that central aspect of this piece? What is it? What's the hook that I think is really cool? And how can I take that little hook and then change it into something else? Mm -hmm. And so those are kind of three different approaches that I take to writing my own tunes. Yeah, excellent. How has your, your music education helped with your let's say professional career and your professional writing career as a musician or yeah I guess has it had any influence or has it was it um not as helpful as you hoped it would be well it definitely has uh, in some ways in some ways it's kind of in the background mm -hmm. you know all that theory knowledge that i that i i got in university I don't sit down and use that directly, but it's all in there. And when you listen to my compositions, to my Celtic compositions, they're not exactly what you would expect from a fiddle tune, right? There's all that influence of those years of playing classical music and that love of Baroque music. And, and you know, so that that knowledge of theory and and, and history and, you know, all that knowledge that I got from university. Do I use it directly? Probably not so much. Uh, mm -hmm. I do write harmony parts and I do, especially for some of my student groups, like I would say in some ways, that's where I use it most directly is that with my student groups, I'll say, okay, this is a cool tune. I want harmony parts for my kids to learn. And so I'll sit down and write them, you know, using the theory. In my own music, I do a lot of it the other way around, where I hear a tune and I hear a melody, I hear a harmony part, and I'm not, you know, calculating like what chord is this going from and, you know, what interval is this, you know, it, it's more happening without the, the calculation, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I still feel like it was definitely worthwhile and without that knowledge, would it be so intuitive? Sure, that makes sense. In, uh, so in, in 2012, you were named the Classical Artist of the Year and received that award. What was that like? And how has that, or has it changed your music career in any way? That was pretty crazy. I almost didn't go. <laughs> Why not? because I looked at the list of people who are up for the award. I was like, there's no way I'm going to win this. And so I almost didn't bother going. Mm -hmm. and I did. My former violin teacher, the concert master of the symphony was up for the award. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, right. I'm going to win over these people. Sure thing. <laughs> and then I went and, uh, my name was announced. I was like, Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so up I went completely unprepared. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, as far as has it changed my career, you know, I don't, people aren't, 
calling me for gigs saying, hey, we heard your classical musician of the year, but it's still something cool mm -hmm. to have on the website. And uh, you may be headed in this direction, but the cool thing is where I've won three awards, they're all for different things. Right. Right. I won one for classical, being classical musician of the year. I won one for being educator of the year. And then I won one for um, Roost traditional album of the year. So that is really neat uh, for me, having such a varied career to have been recognized in those three different areas. Mm -hmm. And so that's something cool. You know, when you're applying for something, to have that, to actually have uh, recognition for those different areas is something that that does make people go, oh, that's really cool. You know, does it make people hire me? Probably not, but it does make them go, hey, that, that's kind of cool. Right. Well, I mean, it can't hurt to say that you are a multiple award-winning musician in multiple areas and, and a teacher. I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> Good. I'm, so I'm, I'm curious on how you maybe kind of look at fear these days versus when you were first getting started. Um, so obviously part of the, the deal with being a musician is being in front of people and performing. Have, did you ever have any kind of performance anxiety in the beginning and was kind of nervous to be in front of people to put out yourself in that way? Oh, yeah, it was terrible. Um, all through when I was a kid. So I was a super quiet kid. Um, I am an introvert. And being on stage, oh, my word, my legs would shake and I'd be super nervous. And yeah, it was terrible. Absolutely terrible. And especially if I had to speak. If I could just get up and play, that was okay. But if I had to get up and introduce my piece mm -hmm. and tell people what it was about, that was just awful. And so that all changed for me to a degree in university because I was performing so much. You know, there were months in university that I'd be doing, you know, 18 shows in a month. And you either you have to get over it or you're going to be catatonic, right? Like there's just, yeah. there's no other option. So that, you know, my students, my, my private students often get nervous and that's always what I tell them, you know, like you just, you have to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's scary. Absolutely. But if you don't do it, if you run away from it, it's always going to be terrifying. If you keep doing it, then at some point it's going to be exciting, right? Because yeah. that's part of the trick. Do I get nervous now? Generally, I don't, but I'm excited, right? When I'm going to go perform, <laughs> I'm definitely excited about it. So it's about reframing that fear into excitement mm -hmm. and using that energy because it's all energy. And if you can take your fear and, and use that energy for good, mm -hmm. <laughs> then, then it's going to work. Yeah. Well, good. Of, so of all the songs that you've written so far, I guess, and performed, what, what has been your favorite song to perform? Yeah, that's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> My guitarist and I have a joke about that because every show I get up, I'm like, this is one of our favorites. This is one of our favorites. <laughs> They're this all favorites. Right? And so like the whole set, like Catherine, you can't keep saying it's one of your favorites because they all are. I mean, I'm not going to get up and say, this is a tune I hate to play, but here it is anyway, right? Like you're right. going to your favorites. <laughs> <laughs> So, so many favorites from my favorite from the most recent album, just because that's the freshest one, uh, is The Friar's Walk. And that was a bit of a surprise. And I often have this experience. I go into the studio and I have tunes that are my favorites. And then sometimes they end up being really hard to record and sometimes tunes so you go and you're like yeah yeah that, that tune's okay and then you come out at the end of the day you're like, yeah that was amazing that's a great track i don't know what the magic is i don't know what happens uh but the friar's walk is definitely <laughs> one of my favorites yeah do you know why that is that for me it's because that one, whenever I play it, it just feels like you're soaring. It feels like you're mm -hmm. soaring through the air. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just such, such a beautiful tune, but like, it, it's not, it's not just beautiful. It, it's, yeah, this feeling of 
you know, if I was going to put a video to it, it would have aerial photography, you know, going over this amazing landscape scene. Yeah. Because that's how that one makes me feel. Yeah, wonderful. When you, so when you start doing your tours, how far around do you tour or do you mostly stay in the New Brunswick area? So far, I've stayed in the New Brunswick area. Okay. Uh, with the new album, I have big plans. Big, big plans. Yeah. Uh, next June, June of 2020, uh, we're looking at touring New England. Um, June of 2021, I'm going to put this all out into the universe and see what happens. Yeah. June of 2021, planning on touring to Ireland and possibly January of 2021, looking at Australia. Wonderful. So, you know, we're looking at going from basically not touring at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to going to Australia. <laughs> yeah, to a world tour. I think that's, why I think not? that's, a, why not? It's a fan, fantastic way to do it. And, and yes, I had a secret like, question to ask in there. And I'm glad that you said New England first, because I'm, uh, <laughs> since I live in New England, really easy to, for me to get to personally. So completely selfish, but your, you know, your music sounds absolutely amazing and i would love to see it live so this is i also make sure that i post a link in the show notes to where your your touring schedule and also just for my own purposes keep tabs so that i can come say hi to you in person in the summertime that would be amazing yeah excellent so with everything that you have have done and experienced over these years what would you say has been the best advice that you have ever received so the best advice i've ever received is make it easy for people to give you money. <laughs> I like it. Please go so on. I, <laughs> I am resistant to change. Mm -hmm. um, this was advice that I got about, you know, selling CDs, about having your music available on your website, about, you know, even at, at this point, streaming wasn't a thing, but you know, about all of these things, make it easy. Don't make people jump through hoops to hire you, to buy your stuff, to give you money, right? Make it as right. easy as possible. And so that every time I feel resistant to change, I think back to that and I think, no, no, you have to embrace this. Make it easy for people to give you money. <laughs> Wonderful. You know, so that's, fantastic advice across all boards like no matter what industry you're in you have to make it easy for people to give you money so i think that's it's <laughs> it's great short succinct i love it excellent so, Catherine, thank you so much for chatting with me i really appreciate your time uh if the listeners would like to buy your albums watch you live you know see more about what your work is where is, are the best places they can go to do that so if they go to my website, um, that is the central place. And then I have links there to all of my social media. Uh, I'm quite active on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook to a degree. Uh, I do have a YouTube channel, but all the links are there. So if they go to my website, katherinemahler.com or .ca, actually .com will get you there too, but katherinemahler.ca. Okay, <laughs> great. That's right. That's right. Because you're in Canada, katherinemahler.ca. Okay. Perfect. And I will, so I'll put the links in the show notes um, to your website as well as your uh, Instagram and, and Twitter handles so people can click right through. So that's awesome. Excellent. Again, thank you so much. I really appreciated this. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Advance Your Art Podcast. If you like this episode, please go into iTunes and give us a five-star rating. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button so that every single time I release a new episode, it will go directly to you without even thinking about it. If you're interested in hearing older episodes, please go to AdvanceYourArt.com where you can find the catalog of everything I've done so far, as well as contact information and projects I'm working on. Thank you again, and have a great day.